Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How lovely to see you. And I'm welcoming you, but I, it is I who have been welcomed by you. And um, very delightfully, Father Jim, who is away on vacation, has asked me to be with you here this Sunday and next Sunday. And so this is why I am here. My name is Christina Reese with a muller in there, because that's um, why we have come to be here. And I'm here with some of my family. And this was my hometown church for part of the time we were growing up, whenever we were here in Bridgehampton. So in a sense, it is a homecoming, but it's wonderful to be here. And we are gathering today so that we can worship God and I pray that you will also meet with Christ in a new way. of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. partakers of your heavenly treasure through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen. Amen. do be seated a reading from the book of Esther the king and Haman went in to feast with Queen Esther. On the second day, as they were drinking wine, the king said again to Esther, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen oh. Esther answered, If I have won your favor, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me. That is my petition. And the lives of my people, that is my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. If we had been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have held my peace. But no enemy can compensate for this damage to the king. Then King Ajuera said to Queen Esther, Who is he, and where is he, who has presumed to do this? Esther said, A foe and enemy, this wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. Then Harbona, one of the eunuchs in attendance on the king, said, Look, the very gallows that Haman has prepared for Mordecai, whose words saved the king, stands at Haman's house, 50 cubits high. And the king said, hang him on that. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the anger of the king abated. <clears throat> Mordecai recorded these things and sent letters to all the Jews who were in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, both near and far, enjoining them that they should keep the 14th day of the month Adar and also the 15th day of the same month, year by year, as the days on which the Jews gained relief from their enemies and as the month that had been turned for them from sorrow into gladness and from mourning into a holiday. 
that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending gifts of food to one another and presents to the poor. The word of the Lord. And we'll read Psalm 124 together. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel now say, If the Lord had not been on our side, when enemies rose up against us, then would they have swallowed us up alive in their fierce anger toward us? Then would the waters have overwhelmed us and the torrent gone over us? Then would the raging waters have gone right over us? Blessed be the Lord. He has not given us over to be a prey for their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our health is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. A reading from the letter of James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. And anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose <coughs> you. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to end life maimed than have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. For it is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves <coughs> and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You 
might think that those were three rather odd, cobbled together readings with a lot of dramatic action and a little bit of exaggeration. I like to think that, uh, that Jesus, when he was uh, going on after he had already taught about, do you know what? Don't worry about what they're doing. If they're doing something and they're doing it in my name, let them. Because either the intentions of their heart are pure and true and it will come right, or they're not. So don't worry about them. Don't worry about what they're doing. Don't let their lives and what they're doing cause you to stumble. Why don't you pay attention to yourself and to what causes you to stumble? And then he goes off on one with just a tiny bit of exaggeration. And I like to think that maybe he noticed somebody getting a little distracted or getting tired, or looking at their watches, and going, whoo, he's going on a bit. <laughs> and then he goes on and said, oh, I'm going to get their attention. If you habitually trip up on something, and it's your hand, then chop it off. Get rid of it. Get rid of the thing. It's better for you to be right and go to heaven than go to hell with two hands and so on and so on and so on. And so he gets their attention. He gets their attention. And it's to say, really, what's going on in you? Let's not be so concerned about what's going on in them, but what's going on in you? And what do you bump up against over and over again in your life? Be aware of it, face it, and by my grace and with my help, get rid of it, get rid of it. And we saw in James that lovely sort of very practical down-to-earth advice. Are you suffering? Well, pray. Are you happy? That's great. Why don't you dance around and sing songs of praise? Are you sick? You're not alone. Call for the elders. They'll come around and they'll pray for you. And so we see this picture of James saying, if you're going to be a follower of Christ, there's some things you actually have to do and some things you can do which you may not know that you can do. Because whatever is going on in your life, you're not alone in it. People are not mind readers, so don't sit there suffering in silence. If you're sick, if you need help, come to us, the body of the faithful. We can pray with you. We can pray for you. We can support you. It's a new way of life, a new way of looking at your neighbor, a new way of seeing yourself as part of something bigger, a community that is not boundaried by address or relationships it is the people who gather in the name of christ that's what the difference is we gather we support one another we pray for one another but you have to do something about it you have to say help i need a little help i need a little support here so now let's go backwards in time to Esther, the extraordinary book of Esther. And if, if you haven't sat down and read Esther all the way through, I advise you to brew yourself a strong cup of coffee or tea or something even stronger. Sit down and read it from start to finish. It's not that long. It is extraordinary, amazing. And in it, we see the central character, there are several big characters that Nicole mentioned, but the central character is this young, beautiful Jewish girl called Esther. And 
the story starts, and we must remember about the Old Testament. When we're reading the Old Testament, we read it sort of backwards through the lens of the New Testament. We have that privilege. We look backwards. And we're always saying, where do I find Christ? Where do I see what God is doing in the light of what we know as Christians? What's going on in there? But it doesn't stop just with what do we see of Christ, of Jesus and what he did and his ministry and life and death and resurrection. Because of the Holy Spirit, we also can say, what is it saying to me now? If the Old Testament is indeed part of the living word of God, it will have life for us now. So we look at Esther and say, what is Esther saying to us today, now? What is Esther saying to me? Now Esther was an orphan. Her parents died. Her uncle Mordecai took her on. He was her guardian. He gave her home. He brought her up. And then this story hits. The king, Ahasuerus, and Ahasuerus is the only figure that we see in, in history. He's known as Xerxes I, and he lived about 500 years before Christ. So Xerxes I has a hot temper. He is a man who does not like to be crossed. He blows hot and cold. He's fluky. And he throws this huge celebration that lasts so long and goes on and on and on. And he gets to the end of the celebration when he's just sort of having a seven day drinking with his best buddies. And at the end of that, he says, I want to see my beautiful wife, Vashti, bring her on and make her wear the crown and show her off in front of my friends. And when the eunuch goes to Vashti and says, Vashti, no. She goes, no, no, I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. This has gone on long enough. I I'm just not doing that. Being ogled by all his drunk friends. And when the king hears of it, he blows his stack. And eventually he has her banished. He takes advice and he says, okay, what do I do now? A uh, uh, king needs a queen. And one of his wise advisors says, go into all the streets, have your eunuchs go and gather up all the most beautiful girls who are on the sidewalks, hanging out in the cafes and bring them into the palace. And then you can choose, O oh king, choose the one you like the best. And that's what happens. And Esther is one of those. She's taken away from Mordecai, her uncle, and she's brought into, by a eunuch, into the sort of the king's harem, where she doesn't even get to see him for a whole year because she has spa treatments. She has a whole year of being oiled and pampered and taught how, it's like a finishing school mixed with a spa, mixed, who knows? But she spends a year taking this beautiful young girl and making her even more beautiful and more polished and more ready to meet the king. And when she is brought in front of him, he falls for her hook, line, and sinker. That's the one. I want her to be my new queen. And you might think at that point, why write a book any more about Esther? She's made it. She's the chosen one. Lucky Esther. That's not the story. Esther was a Jew. Mordecai, her uncle, was a Jew. The Jews lived peaceably among the people of Susa. But unbeknownst, one of the king's closest advisors, Haman, was plotting against them because he was jealous of Mordecai because Mordecai had found favor with the king by helping him out and foiling an assassination attempt. As I say, you've got to read the whole thing. And so he gets the king, he tricks him into signing an edict 
to annihilate all the Jews. Esther hears about it, and what does she do? Run screaming out of the palace and take to the hills with her uncle? No, Esther says, Mordecai, call all the people together and declare a solemn fast and pray. And she goes back to her quarters and he said to her, Mordecai says, I will and do what you have to do, do what you can do to save us. And who knows that you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. In other words, Esther, this might be down to you. Do what you can to save us. She goes back to her quarters and is surrounded by her maids who aren't even Jewish. They don't even know she's Jewish. And she says to them, fast with me and pray for three days because my people are in peril and they do. And then she cooks up a plot and has a, a I, I, I can't go into the details, but she invites her own husband and Haman, the baddie, to a series of two dinners at which she hopes and prays that Haman will expose himself. But it is such a high risk strategy because King Azuerus, known for his bad temper, also has a way of behaving. If he's sitting in his stateroom and someone asks to be let in to see him that he has not previously invited, he can either pick up his golden scepter and hold it out to them, which means come before me, let's chat, or he will not, in which case the person is carted away and killed. So Esther takes her own life in her hands and comes and says, I want to go in to the king's presence. And as he, she approaches him where he's sitting, he sees her and he holds out the golden scepter. And she comes in and then says, oh king, please have dinner with me, do this, do that. And the plan unfolds and he agrees, he agrees. His heart is melted and he says, I'll give you whatever, up to half my kingdom. And so the next night, there they are dining, the king, Haman and Esther. And Esther says, my people are going to be killed. There is someone who is plotting to have them wiped out. She had not told him up to that time that she was a Jew. And the king says, who's doing this? This is horrible. The story goes on. Haman is exposed. Quite a few other things happen, but he eventually ends up on the gallows that he had already built at his home for Mordecai. And so Esther, in her acts of very incredible bravery and also cleverness, she worked out something that she thought, this is my best bet. And her spiritual and physical preparation saved her people. And to this day, what Esther did is commemorated with two days of giving gifts, giving thanks and celebrating. That's known as Purim. That was celebrated this year on the 24th of March. And so what do we see today? What, is we, what do we see? We see Jesus saying, look at your own heart. See what's going on in you. Where are you with following me? Where is your integrity, your faithfulness, your love, your compassion? Don't go judging other people. We see James saying, get real. Following Christ is not easy. Come together, ask for help.
And then we see Esther taking st a stand and risking her own life to save her people when she could have played it safe. But she would have denied her people, denied her own identity, she would have lost her integrity, and her life might as well be over. She chose the hard, the honest, the loyal thing. And so these three very different scriptures have both something to say to us, to help us, to give us hope, but also to challenge us, to challenge us. Where's our heart? What's the intent of our heart? What do we have to look at in ourselves and sort to really follow Christ? What are we being called to do that's difficult, that we might need help with in order to do it? But for each and every one of us, where is the path of integrity? Where is the path of following Christ? Please do stand as we say the creed. We believe in one God, the Father and Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. God is not made of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, which he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead, and the light of the world to come. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops, our rector, and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be as one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, especially in Sudan, Ukraine, Israel, and Gaza. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer. For refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected 
we pray to you, O Lord. The Lord have mercy. For this congregation, for those who are present and for those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. The Lord have mercy. For all those who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Anne, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord our God. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Do kneel or stand. stand. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry. God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We greet one another in God's name. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. You probably know what's going on much better than I do. But uh, I would like to point out that on Saturday, the 12th of October, there's going to be a service at 5 in the evening for a blessing of animals. So if you have a pet that you would like to bring and have your pet blessed, please bring the pet. And I think, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, I know how I like to do it, is I welcome everything from birds and insects and reptiles and livestock to horses and anything else, and all stations in between, even the odd dog or cat. So, um, blessing of the animals. I'm sure it will be a blessing to everyone at that service on October the 12th. And then a month ahead, a wonderful um, service here at the 10 o'clock, the Seasons of Love Mass, uh, which sounds like a wonderful thing. I don't exactly know what that's going to be like, but I'm sure it will be very exciting. So those are two things to look forward to. And now, look for Thank mm -hmm. you.
you, Lord. We thank you for all that has been given for this uh, wagon. And we ask that every food here will go to bless people's lives who do not have enough and who go to bed hungry. With the food and the nourishment, we also pray that you would give them hope and encouragement. And we ask this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 Thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give and it is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true <coughs> promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood <coughs> and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to <coughs> proclaim the glory of your name. you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all. <coughs> this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. <coughs> Thank you. 
Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. As we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, <coughs> presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious Father, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, <clears throat> now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be pleased. Alleluia.
great privilege being here with you this morning and uh, I, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day for now the blessing the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace and the blessing of God Father Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.